Hi everyone. Welcome to the very first tutorial I'm doing here on YouTube. This one is going to be of a yellow butterfly. And this is the outline. You can find the link below that you can download from my website if you do not want to draw it from scratch. You are welcome to go ahead and click that and it's free. You can download it. So here you're going to see me laying out the sketch. I always start with a hard pencil and I just start to lay it out. And if you want to get supplies ready for this, you can find any colored pencils you have. If you have Crayola ones, that is just fine. If you have higher end ones, that is fine as well. You could use color crayons, you can use markers. The whole reason I'm doing these tutorials is that we are all cooped up in our house right now. All over the country and the world, people are staying home, and I think creativity is a really part of saving our sanity. So I wanted to create these tutorials and give people something to do, something that is fun. Step outside of your box a little bit and just bring some creativity into your life. Use this time to tap into maybe something you didn't know that you had or something you'd forgotten that you enjoyed doing. So here on the drawing, I am drawing, I just finished the wings really lightly. You can see me sketching in the antennas, more of the fuzzy part with the legs. I do a lot of drawings on YouTube here and show the process, but I thought it would be fun to do some that you could draw along with or that you could just listen and we'll just share stories here. This is a really laid back, sitting here with my coffee and just relaxing and just wanted to connect with you all. I am used to working from home. I am home. Um, I homeschool my son as well. So for me, this is not a huge change, but I know for many people, suddenly being in their houses with everybody for long hours can be a big change. So I welcome you here. So I just sketched in, I believe it's a thistle sort of, um, or clover maybe flower. Feel free to comment if you know what it is. And as I start sketching this, I'm going to do a yellow butterfly with a purple flower. But you are welcome to choose any colors that you like. Don't feel caught up in having to do exactly how I do it. And I'm working on my video quality here as well, so bear with me. The next one hopefully will be a little better and we'll just keep improving. I decided to model taking imperfect action rather than waiting until I got it exactly perfect before I shared this. So you'll see me sketching here for a little while and then I throughout the process took photos so that then you can see the image a little clearer than this video was allowing us to to see. So I like to sharpen my pencils really sharp and I use the side of the pencil as much as possible in doing larger areas like this. This one was about a five by seven sheet of paper. So when you print yours out, you can do whatever size or you could sketch, sketch along with me here. And I have this at double speed. So feel free to pause this video at any time if you feel like you're getting behind and just get caught up. This video will end up being about a half hour, but in real life, this took me about an hour to do. So there you could see the higher image and now we go back to a little blurry, so I'm sorry about that. So I did a soft yellow for the wings and then this one is actually like a deep um, pinkish color, but not a hot pink. It's more of a pink with a little bit of um, like a dusty rose kind of feel to it. And this butterfly I was using as a reference had pink edging on the tops of the wings. It was really beautiful and it balanced out the yellow really nicely as well. So I'm just going along. You can see there's the bottom wing where you'll see that pink line on the top and then there's the top wing. And then what I was just sketching along was the top wing from the other side, the back side of the butterfly that we don't see the whole wing of. 
And then on this butterfly too, there was a little bit of white along the whole edge of the wings. So that's why you see a little bit of a gap between the yellow and then I do a little bit of fringe um, brush strokes or pencil strokes just to create the illusion that there's a little bit of white in there. So you'll see me do a lot on the yellow and then sometimes you'll see me jump away from the yellow a little bit and that's what I'm doing there. Now we're going in and there's the leg of the butterfly. This is the largest leg. It has a really fuzzy top where it meets the butterfly wings. When I'm doing one color like this, I tend to go and do all over the entire butterfly with that color as I have it out. And then I, sometimes you'll see my pencil go away and I'm sharpening my pencil and then I come back. So it may seem like there's no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing and that very well could be the case. I will admit that. So I just got back from a few days in Asheville, North Carolina for work and I had a really great time out there working on my business and setting up my business plan for the rest of the year. And as I was lucky that I had a flight back home, since the airport was basically a ghost town, I really decided I'm going to take several days a week for the next month at least, or maybe two. We'll see how long these quarantines last for a lot of people and create these tutorials. I'm going to do one coming up as well that, oh, there's me cleaning the screen of the camera. <laughs> I'm going to do one as well coming up where I'm taking the basic 12 pack of Crayola colored pencils, ones that every kid gets as school supplies. And I'm gonna show you some really neat things you can do with just the basic colored pencils. So if you don't have those yet, feel free to get them because I will have videos coming up for those. And if you have rubbing alcohol or paint thinner and a, any size paintbrush, the smaller probably the better. You can have those on hand if you want to do the next drawing with me with those. I'm going to show you some ways that we can take those Crayola colored pencils and really make them behave a little more professionally. One thing I did really find is as... I was sharpening these the Crayola pencils though. They were really frustrating. They kept breaking off. That is one thing that the higher end pencils don't do as much. So here I took some green and I am just adding a little bit throughout the wings. And what it does is it kind of creates a dusty feeling to it and a little contrast. And now I'm going in and just really making the yellow a deeper color. Now this is on drawing paper that has a little bit of a tooth to it. Not too much, but a little bit. And if you have any watercolor paper on hand or drawing paper, go ahead and use those. But if you don't, it is just fine to use printer paper or whatever you have. If you have a grocery bag that's a paper brown grocery bag, use that. Cut out a square and draw on the inside side of that. The really big thing about this is the results that we're getting is more than about the drawing. It's really about connecting with a part of yourself that it's almost meditative. When I draw, I go into a part of my brain that you just focus on the brush stroke you're doing. And then you focus on the next brush stroke and you can't get ahead of yourself. You don't have to think about what you just did. You just pay attention to what needs to happen right at the moment. And there's something really freeing about that process and calming. So now I've gone in and I have a dark brown pencil and I'm doing some darkening of the antenna 
And what I'm doing here is really teeny little lines around the edges. You'll start to see, here's one of the um, legs or antennas. In order to keep this feeling like it has um, like that really fine hairy texture that butterfly wings have and their bodies have, I do a lot of short strokes. I don't get, get caught up in doing really long smooth strokes. And right where the wings meet the body, there is a little dark part that happens on the body. It's not a really clean line. And so don't feel that you need to make it really precise. And now I'm going in with almost a lime green color and adding more texture. Lots of little lines. Creating a fuzzy body. Sure, you know, a caterpillar. We actually just had one of those in our garage today, a really fuzzy little caterpillar. And that really fuzzy short hair, I mean, basically is what that is on a butterfly, right? So that's the effect that you're getting. So feel free to leave in the comments. I would love to hear what you are doing during this time. Are you at home? Has your life been affected by the coronavirus stuff going on? And if you're watching this later, feel free to comment how it did affect you, if it did at all. I am someone who really works hard to not get caught up in fear and not panic, but also not be an idiot about it. Try to be really respectful of other people's health needs and take care of myself so anyone I'm exposed to I'm not getting them sick as much as possible here I'm going with a pinkish red color and just really lightly going along the edges so as many of you know it has been a really bizarre month for me I started with my oldest got in a car accident and totaled her car and thank God she was okay but she was three hours away from me down at college. And the paperwork and the figuring that out that comes with days and days and making sure she was okay and everything that comes with that we were dealing with. And then a few days after that, I got a call that my grandfather had a heart attack. And he's someone who lived a couple miles of me or from me basically my whole life. We would go there quite often when we were kids, and in the last few years especially, as we helped them transition, helped my grandparents transition from their home to an assisted living center, we really spent a lot of time with my grandma and grandpa, and I had actually been sitting and having sessions with him the last year or two where I was recording him talking about his experiences during World War II, so I'm really grateful that I have all of those memories of his on um, audio recordings now for me to go through. But so following his heart attack, him being 94, they really decided that the stint that he needed wasn't, um, he probably wouldn't make through the surgery. So they put him on comfort care slash hospice at that point. And that was on a Tuesday. And so for the entire next week, all the way until Wednesday, between my aunts and uncles and cousins and brothers and sisters, we really all tried to have someone be with him around the clock. And so it was a really special experience to get to talk with him and share things with him. In the first few days, he was pretty lucid and with it. And we were able to have some really deep conversations and really thank him for a lot that he's done in our life. And for me, especially, I got to one of the nights when I was spending the night there overnight with my sister. I was explaining to him as he had a awake moment. And he wasn't having as many of these moments. And I was explaining to him that his body was shutting down. That his heart had stopped working right. 
And then his body was very tired. He was 94 and his body was, was getting ready to kick him out basically. And that now it's, we're there with him to help him as he figures out how to get where he's going to heaven. And it, it was a really beautiful conversation. And later on in the night, he looked like he had his eyes open and he looked like he was thinking. And I, I asked him, what are you thinking about, Grandpa? And he said, I'm thinking about what dying is or how to die. I said, well, what do you know? And he said, not much. He, <laughs> I'm working on it is what he said. <laughs> And so here you can see a detailed image of, of the brushstroke so far on the video. Um, and at one point he reached up and thanked both me and my sister and gave us a big hug for being there with them. And this, this is the series of conversations. We many times gave him permission. It's okay to go. We're okay. We'll take care of grandma. And as, as a granddaughter of somebody who probably was a lot more abrasive and rough maybe with his kids as a grandpa he was he was very supportive and showed up to every one of my sporting events growing up and my you know my concerts and anytime that he could be there he was for me and my siblings and a lot of my cousins especially the local ones and so to be able to give back in any way to a man who did all that for me was very special I just kept thinking about how when my mom passed, I didn't get to say goodbye. We didn't know it was coming. And what a gift it is if you have someone in your life where you know they're going to pass as hard as that moment is in those weeks, months, days, whatever it is. There is something so special about getting to say what you want to say and what you've maybe put off saying to somebody and to get to hear something in return from them. And it's just something I'll, I will cherish forever that I got to have that time with him. And as well as the first day I went up there, and I wasn't sure he was even going to be alive still when I got to the emergency room, to be honest. So I prepared myself, and he was, thank goodness. And we, you know, that was the beginning of eight days, eight or nine days. But each time as I left to go home, you can't, you know, I, I knew I had to come home and be with my own family, take care of my own kids, do laundry, sleep, all of those things. It was so heartbreaking to leave because you just, you have to assume that that's the last time you're going to see that person. And so somewhere along the way, I surrendered that it's okay if I'm not there with him when he goes. But something in me really wanted to be. And I've never been with anybody when they passed away before. But I knew I, at least I believed, I was strong enough to handle that. And I really wanted to be able to provide that comfort to him in any way when he went. But so yes, so I surrendered knowing it's probably not going to work out that way. And that's okay. Whoever's there, it's meant to be. And if none of us are there and he is with my grandmother or he's alone, that's okay too. In fact, that morning, um, I got Aspen up early. We went up there, got there by 6 a.m. And, and my dad showed up a little bit after that. And I actually told him, my dad and I went in the lobby with Aspen. But before I left, I said, Grandpa, we're going to go out in the hallway. So if you want to do this alone... This is your time. We won't be here. If that's how you prefer it. And we went out and we sat in the lobby and I taught Aspen solitaire. And we spent about 45 minutes out there. And then we came back and he was still he was still going. And so we sat with him. And then my grandma came down soon after. And we let them have some time together. And they've been married almost 70 years. It was so beautiful to watch her hold his hand day after day and talk to him and him just light up when she would come in the room. He knew she was there. And that morning, ultimately, he passed. 
um, I was holding one hand and my grandma was holding the other and my dad was there and my son was there. And it was so peaceful and it was so, it was hard, but it was also, I, I love to imagine him getting to see my mom again and getting to see his parents and siblings and everyone else who's passed this whole other adventure that he's on to. And so that's what my first week of March was. And then following that, I, his funeral was scheduled for this past week on a Tuesday with the burial on a Wednesday. And we had had my daughter scheduled for her wisdom teeth removal on the Monday. And my business coaching, I was flying out Wednesday afternoon until Saturday. So somehow <laughs> we managed to get through that week. We're wrapping it up now and everything went really smoothly and was beautiful. And we got to see a lot of family and, and be with each other. And I'm really grateful for that. But definitely any tickle in my throat or <laughs> anything, I had to be really aware of. I'm about to meet a lot of people, especially at the funeral and sitting in the nursing home and the assisted living centers and the hospital and to not pass on any sickness as much as possible. So I'm, while being completely exhausted, so self-care has been something on my mind for the last few weeks of just very diligently making sure I'm taking my vitamins and getting enough sleep and doing all that I can, washing my hands, things like that. But so anyways, that is what my my few weeks have been about and it's been beautiful and really full circle of life and heartbreaking all mixed together and now we're rebuilding these next steps here as Skylar's now home from college they canceled the rest of their semester in person and she'll be doing all of her college virtually while she's home here with us so we're re planning out what that looks like as a family here and and figuring out the car situation, still her car is still totaled. So we're trying to figure out what to do with that. And it's all good. Everything is, it's okay. We're safe and we're okay and together. So, so here I am adding back to the drawing. I'm adding the green in and you can do these little individual petals. They're almost curled up petals. It appears to be so everyone's a little different you can decide if you want to go into detail on them or just color them with you know a little bit of shading don't panic with this just make them look nice and fun one way you could do is outline everyone and just go in with a combination of a couple colors that you like you could do the whole thing in one color and then shade in a little bit of a, a different color like do the whole thing pink and shade in a purple or do the whole thing purple and shade with a little bit of blue around the edges. There's no wrong way to do this. So don't get caught up on feeling like every little petal on that flower has to be perfect. It, it doesn't. It's okay. So here with a, a medium grass green sort of color, I'm going back in and outlining a lot of these petals. I zoomed in so closely with this camera and I think that's the problem why it's so out of focus. So I am so sorry about that. I'm going to figure it out. That's my goal. So I'm all about sharing our stories. As you can tell, I'm a pretty, pretty much an open book when it comes to a lot of good times and hard times. I don't want to act like life is perfect and none of us go through things and I also don't believe the hard times have to take us down and ruin lives and we can we can harvest any good we can out of that or any life lessons and carry them forward. So here with the white colored pencil, I'm going in and if you push a little harder with a white colored pencil, it actually blends the colors together. You don't want to do this too early when you're using colored pencils because it'll flatten the paper and we've all done that where then it gets kind of glossy and it's really hard to get any other color to stick over it. 
but towards the end you can go in and do that and that's just fine so now with the darker colors I'm going in and adding some extra contrast here I decided the petals seemed uneven so I added a couple more just visually make it look better there's again no wrong way to do it now I'm going with a little bit of sky blue color and just adding a little color to it If any of you have have stories, have you had something like that, you know, where somebody's passed by you or that was close to you? I'd love to hear your story. If you're okay sharing that, you can share it in the comments if you're okay with that or you can email me. I was talking to a woman this past weekend and she got a sign from a loved one of a yellow butterfly. And I... Decided that would be a perfect drawing to start this off with. So whether you're just excited for spring or if a yellow butterfly means something to you or any color butterfly, this drawing is a perfect way to capture that. So now this is something that you probably won't have at home, but I wanted to do it since I do have the supplies. It is something called, let me see what this is called, colored pencil touch-up texture. And it's basically this clear um, material that looks almost like nail polish. It's in like a nail polish style bottle. And then there's white powder. And you mix them together and it basically gives you a paintable inside of a colored pencil. It's just a little creamier so you can go on at the end of a colored pencil drawing. Oftentimes I'll do this with the portraits and I'll do the dot in the white, you know, the reflection in the eyeball maybe a couple of the reflections on the lips. So it's a great way and it keeps the color or the texture of the colored pencil without having a glare or anything feel really different when you're looking at the originals. In watercolor, you can a lot of times mask off parts that you're going to leave white, but it's not quite the same with colored pencils. We would kind of rough that up right away when we'd color over it. So this is a great way that we can go back in and clean up and add some highlights. And here I just wanted to show too, around the edge of the flower and the antennas, I kind of just went in and added some white and cleaned up where you can almost make the petals seem a little bit thinner. If you don't like the total shape of something at the end. And for this too, if you have like a, a gel pen, there's a lot of people that will use a gel pen at this stage also. So if you have that, feel free to use that. Or you can do what you can with a white colored pencil if you have that. So let me know, what would you love to see as a subject for one of these tutorials? Is there something you've been wanting to draw that you just haven't gotten around to or that you would love to, to practice on? Right now on my list I have cardinals, since that is what a lot of um, you are attracted to with my work. But I wanted to do some other things too, maybe a dragonfly, flowers... I like things that are along that remembrance theme, but they don't have to be. So this is the finished one. And then just for fun, I decided to go in with a, a soft gray, a green, and a little black even, and add a background to this. And this is so not necessary, and I would not even encourage you. It was kind of a pain in the butt. But I wanted to just see what it would be like. So once I colored everything in, what I'm doing here with the brush is I'm taking paint thinner it's actually let's see it's called low odor thinner um, and I've also done this with rubbing alcohol and that works well too 
and I'm going to show a zoomed up version of this video here in a second, but what it does is it blends all those brush strokes together. So from going where you see the background shining through the brush strokes, it blurs it essentially the drawing sideways here. So this is why it looks a little strange, but you can see it kind of rubs it together and suddenly it's, it's more of a smooth background. So this can be done throughout the process of a piece of artwork. So there is the final. I may put this on my website for sale. We'll see. But I thank you for, for joining me here on my first tutorial. I'd love to hear your feedback. If there's something you wish I would have addressed or if there is more you'd like to see. I really think if we stick together and we can tap into our creativity and just keep a positive outlook to balance out the the fear and all of the information overload that's coming our ways and our life changes as we have kids being home from school and all sorts of things. Get out some colored pencils, sit with your kids, 